Hey, it's Tom from Latest Deals, and I want to talk about how you can turn your clutter into cash. The amount of clutter in our homes is increasing with lockdown, and Southampton University has said that fly tipping, people chucking stuff out onto the street, that's gone up 300%, triple the usual amount. eBay has shown some of the most popular items currently on its site, the online auction site. And that includes dumbbells, which is up 1,906%. You've got jigsaws and puzzles that people are doing at home on their kitchen table. That's up 841%. And hair clippers for those cutting their hair at home like me, that's up 1,566%. So if you have any of these things knocking about in a cupboard, in the attic, now is your golden opportunity. It genuinely is cash in the attic. So, where can you sell these things? Well, there's many sites. Personally, I tend to find eBay really good for branded clothing and very niche specific products such as antiques. I'm currently selling my Xbox on a site called Preloved and things for garden furniture, very popular at the moment. You've got Facebook Marketplace as well as all the local buy and sell Facebook groups. As well as that, there's something called Spock, which is a good all-rounder. That's an app on your phone. And then for vintage clothing, there's things like Depop, that's an app, or Vinted, a website. These are really popular with younger people. And what tends to happen is they go into their parents' wardrobes, they look for an older, uh, old-fashioned item, and they put it on, take a selfie, put it on the website, and they make quite a lot of money too. But if you're going to do that, make sure you get permission first. Now. Some tips on when and how you can sell these things. First of all, it's all about the photo. When you're scrolling through and buying something, your eyes, they just look at photo, photo, photo. And you wanna make sure that yours is very clear and easy. The secret is not about the product, it's about the background. You want to make sure you don't have a cluttered, busy background with lots of stuff going on. Rather, it's got to be a nice, plain, neutral background so that your product stands out to the person when they're scrolling through. They can see it very easily. Also, you want to be honest with your photos. So for example, my Xbox, it has scratches, it is a bit damaged, but you can take a photo of that and include it in your listing to make sure the person is aware of what they're buying. The second most important thing is your description. You want to make sure that you have all the necessary details and words that people may search for when they're looking to buy something. So for example, the model number, the color, the brand, the specifications, the size, and anything else you think is relevant. You want to answer, what is it? How is it? So that's the condition of the item. Is it new? Is it used? And also I like to include why you're selling it. So I tend to write, for example, I haven't used this item in 12 months. I think someone else might enjoy it more. That's just because I'm a little bit skeptical as a buyer when I'm going through and wondering, why is this person selling this thing? Is it broken? So it's a good way just to put buyers at ease. When it comes to pricing, how do you know how much to price an item for? Should I do it really high? Should I go really cheap? The best way I found is just to go onto all the sites that I mentioned and have a look for the same item. Search for what you're selling and see what other people are selling it for or have sold it for. But remember to do some research about how much the postage and packaging costs. To do that, just go to the Royal Mail website, type in the product size and the weight, and the Royal Mail will give you an estimate that you can then include in your pricing. What you don't want to happen is to sell it for a pound and find that the postage costs 10 pounds. That would not be a very good way to start. Okay guys, I hope these tips have helped you. Just one last really important final point, and that is if you are doing collection of an item, someone's coming to your house to pick it up, make sure you maintain your social distance. You put the product on the ground, they pick it up from you. You maintain that social distance, and if you are buying an item, do clean it and just leave it for 72 hours to quarantine the product uh, before you start using it.